time has finally arrived time to start painting it's Friday I'm at my goal and I'm gonna start today um, I'm gonna start off as usual by doing some airbrush coats of under base coats but I bought broke down and bought me a brand new airbrush this is the uh, Awada Eclipse HPCS. Um, I had a Badger. I used Badger for years, and my other one bit the dust. So um, some paint dry. <laughs> so instead of going and buying a brand new one, when I started these new projects, I went and bought a cheap one, and it worked okay for doing uh, wide base coats. I had to turn the pressure way up so I haven't used this one yet but from all the reviews I've seen it's it's one of the top airbrushes out there the uh, and I went ahead and broke down and bought a couple bottles of uh, airbrush paint so I may be able to do a little more detailing um, on it with the airbrush and then but I still gonna do some by hand also um, so I'm going to turn around and get set up here. Uh, but I appreciate y'all following these videos. Uh, I know this one has been kind of lacking in content, and uh, I hope you got something out of it. But uh, if you have any questions, use that comment section and let me know um, if, if there's something that you missed or I didn't do right. Uh, the suggestions are always welcome. <clears throat> so. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and, and give me a thumbs up if you like these videos. So um, I'm going to turn the camera around and get started on this and uh, see what I can come up with. All right, I took some old rags and stuffed in over the gills so that I don't so that I don't get them any overspray on them. And I don't know if in the last crappie painting video I made. Uh, my own reducer to help these acrylic paints spray a little easier but I do have I did buy some some actual uh, airbrush paint just for the base coat stuff that I'll use and uh, so I'm gonna see how that goes um, but I'm gonna start off with um, uh, where to go pearlized Createx, it's an airbrush color, and I'm gonna actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna start with red and lightly put in some flesh tones where some of the places on the fish are kind of pink, a little fleshy. So I'm gonna put in some of that. I'll cover it up a lot with this so. Um, but there's areas around the mouth where it gets kind of flesh tone. It's not just stark white. I think that looks kind of, it looks fake and painted when it's just stark white down through there. start the pearl this is a um, pearlized white and I shouldn't have to reduce this paint I wouldn't think we'll see now I'm going to take this yellow and I'm going to give it a base coat of yellow all right so now I'm going to use the cheap um, 
Hobby Lobby paint, and this is just a, a medium, like olive green. And I'm going to start out spraying just a real fine top coat over this. I don't know if it's the combination of this is just a $150 airbrush versus a $25 airbrush from Harbor Freight <laughs> or if it's the gravity feed versus the siphon feed like the old one was. I think it's just a combination, or, and the reducer. I think it's a combination of all three. I've never used a gravity feed airbrush before. I've always liked the idea and the concept. I just never had. When I first started using airbrush years ago, it was t-shirt art painting and I needed larger volumes of paint so I had multiple brushes I mean multiple bottles of um, paint so I could just swap the paint out swap the bottle out for different paints I need but in this situation I'm not needing that much paint so darker um, green now so I'm gonna use this uh, olive green it's a little bit darker Whoops, forgot to hit record. I added a, a darker um, olive green, mixed a little black with it and just darkened it up a little bit. And so now I'm gonna kinda go over it with this pearlized white again. Changed the light around so hopefully you can see this better now. So I'm just kind of glazing everything back over again. And I'm gonna go over with some white. I did the pearl essence color on there, but I think it's a little too pearly looking for right now. I'll add iridescence to it at towards the end. So um I'm gonna go over this white a little bit here so I'm going to make a an even darker color for the top for the very top
I'm going to put some white back in here to want to highlight the pelvic fins and the anal fin. All right, I am uh, to a point. I want to start putting the the stripes on and uh, start putting some um, some of the darks on. And then at some point I'll go back over and uh, do some thin washes, maybe airbrush some thin washes. And then I'll also be gold tipping, tipping all the scales. But I'm just taking this charcoal and just lightly drawing the black on. And I mean lightly, I'm just barely touching it. need to draw me just a little bit of a line here where I can kind of make sure I stay on track here I don't know why, but it was always my favorite part of doing a fish, a bass, when painting them was, was putting the stripe on. And I'm just lightly, lightly, lightly touching leaving a mark there and I've got a soft brush if there's any area that's too dark I just lightly tap it Kind of soften it up a little bit. And I'm going to do that here too. Because I'll end up going back over these again at some point. When I get done here on this side, I'm going to give it a, uh, a little light coat of satin polyurethane to kind of set that charcoal in place so that it doesn't rub off when I'm doing the other side so it'll start and I use satin because I don't want to build up a lot of gloss yet because my final coat will be glossy the final coat of polyurethane so I'm going to use a satin at first, basically just to set these um, charcoal marks. I'll go down lower than I think I want to, and then I can always kind of lighten them up. 
fade them off with the brush before I set it. So I'm going to start on this side. Okay, so I'm going to get ready to gold tip all the scales, and I'm using a splendid. It's called Splendid Gold. It's just it's from uh, Deco Art, Hobby Lobby, and then uh, and then I have a. It was a little too transparent, so I've got this this uh, pearl colored yellow. It's a little more opaque, and then I have this top coat gold uh, shimmer it doesn't have any color to it but it does have like a gold shimmer to it so and I just kind of mixed them all three together and I did a little experiment here and there to see which one had the best effect ended up being all three of them so um, I've got them mixed here and I'm just using a little tiny this is a number I don't even know what number brush this is uh, it's a zero so I'm gonna start back here towards the tail and I'm gonna just from mid body up and then uh, and I know it's gonna be kind of strong but I'll go over it with a with a like a emerald green wash or just a real light olive green wash maybe just to tone it down a little bit so, but I'm gonna start back here, way back here by the tail so I don't get my hands in it. Okay, so you kind of get the idea of what I'm going through here. I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing. Um, or not in real time anyway. But I'm just going to go down through here and I'm going to do the whole side. Let it dry good. And then go back over and, and, and I'm going to try to do it as I go fade it out. As I go down. Uh, I want it stronger on the top part here. It's just a little strong right now, but like I say, I'll go over it with a, uh, after it's had time to dry, I'll go over it with a real fine wash of green, and it'll tone it down just a little bit, but you'll still, still be able to see the uh, shimmer and the gold of it. Okay, so um, I've got all the scales tipped on the top and on the cheeks. And uh, actually dry brushed a little bit of uh, green and turquoise shimmer. And give it just a, I don't know, it's probably not, it may not show on the camera. But it gives it just a little bit of an iridescence and but i'm going to be going over it now with a some thin washes up here just to tone the gold down just a little bit just very little i just want it to just tone down a little bit 
and it's going to add just a little bit of green to it and uh, all I'm using is olive green but I'm also going to add some of this this green shimmer in with that and maybe a little bit of this turquoise I say these are going to be just super thin and I'm using a wide real soft wide brush for this look it's just real thin real inky real thin and I'm gonna probably do a couple coats to, to build it up I'll kind of see how it goes there we go you probably can't see that but I can tell it I just want to tone them down just a little bit. Alright, I'm going to let that dry a minute. And then I'm going to add another coat or two on there with it. Just to tone it down a little bit more. This is painting the scalaria that I created. Scalera, the whites of the eye. <laughs> that I created with the epoxy sculpt. Here we can see it. sprayed some pearlescent on the belly to make it shine and iridescent I need to let that dry and then I'll come back in and touch up the other fins I feel it's still kind of sticky now I don't want to mess it up so Right here is where I blew through the tail and got it too thin. Can't even tell it after it was painted. On these, I highlighted in between the rays. On this one, I'm going to highlight the rays. The raised, raised rays. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little dental pick and I'm going to go in and start poking and pulling up just little pieces of wooden paint. I'm not taking it off, I'm just poking it in and pulling it up a little bit. And what that does is it, it's leaving a little raised edge that you can feel. And then I'll go in with a... Uh, with a little bit of white or ivory paint dry brush just right over the tips of it and it'll kind of highlight the, the teeth so but all i'm doing you'll hear and see all i'm doing is just going in and pulling and poking poking and pulling okay so i've got the the teeth in 
I just need to uh, just lightly go over this with a little bit of white paint on the brush. And all it's doing is it's highlighting the little teeth. Little pieces that I pulled up. So. I'm going to call that one done. Did y'all hear that owl? He was close. I was coming out of the house, coming around the corner, and I could hear him. But anyway, I, I see him out here all the time, and I hear him even more. It's a nice thing about living out in the country. But anyway, um, I'm done with the largemouth bass project, and uh, it's been a long one. I'm here to tell you. I've spent more time on this one than I have on any other project I've done. I'm right at about 250 hours on this one. And a big part of that was because of the detail I've done, especially the detail of the gills. Um, I probably would have done been done four days ago if I hadn't have done the gills, mouth open, gills flared. Uh, but I wanted to do that, so I did it, and it's done, and overall I'm happy with it. I've got it clear coated, and I've still got a few, um, one more coat to do, and then tomorrow I'm going to uh, mount it to the base after it's set up overnight and had time to cure. I'm gonna mount it to the base. Probably not gonna show that on camera just because that's such an easy thing to do. All I'm gonna do is use the existing work hole I've got here uh, that's in about three inches. And um, I will uh, just drill a hole in the base, epoxy of another uh, shaft in there, brush rod. And then I'm, I'm gonna put the fish on it, but I'm gonna leave it free floating so that I can take it off for transport. I've spent so much time on this, I've kind of ne neglected my yard. I've mowed a couple times, but I've got some limbs I gotta trim and some heavy duty wood eating I gotta do. I ain't even shaved in four days, so <laughs> I need to do that tonight. So, but anyway, um, uh, I appreciate y'all watching. And I know some of the videos that I've uploaded, I uploaded two last night. And uh, so some of them are maybe lacking in content a little bit just because I couldn't get the angles needed to show how I was putting the gills in there. It was, and plus it's such a tedious process. I couldn't hardly worry about putting the gills in there and getting the right camera angles. And so I, I did it off camera. But if you have any questions about it, feel free to leave them for me in the comment section and I'll answer as best I can. Um, but my next project is going to be a walleye. I already got the eyes ordered for it. And uh, I hope you'll be joining me on uh, the series for that. But the next time you see me will be from Springfield, Missouri at the uh, World Taxidermy and Fish Carving Championship. Um, I plan on videotaping that experience and uh, posting it here on my channel. And uh, I hope you'll be here to watch that as well. But anyway, um, I'm going to call this one done. And I uh, appreciate y'all watching on this one. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and uh, give me a thumbs up on the videos if you like them and uh, I will see you on uh, from Springfield.